Hey guys, Jessica here, the Prairie Family Coach, and in today's video, we are debunking probably the top five, I'm gonna say the top five, but definitely five myths about dog training and dog behavior in general. If you're new here, let me welcome you. My name is Jessica and I am the Furry Family Coach. On this channel, we talk about all things dog behavior, positive reinforcement, dog training, canine nutrition, canine enrichment, and every once in a while I do throw in an occasional video about cats. If you are like feeling overdue, for a video about cats, let me know by posting in the comments below. Uh, let's get right into this video where we are debunking five myths about dog behavior and dog training. All right, myth number one. If I use treats to train my dog, then my dog will not listen unless I always have treats. Nah, no, 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 no. Let's debunk this one right away. Okay, so with this myth, this one, this one is particularly insidious. Um, I think because we need to flip like that switch in our brain, right? We need to realize that we feed our dogs every single day and they get that food for free, basically. Like, follow me here, okay? If we are providing rewards for behavior we want to see, which by the way, is a scientifically proven way to teach behavior. Um, it's a way to teach all sorts of things, but let's, let's focus in on behavior. If we are teaching behavior and we use reward based training, that that's a, those are different signals in the brain. It's going to be much more ingrained. That behavior is going to become second nature because of the positive reinforcement that has been received for exhibiting that behavior. Now I think, what has perpetuated this myth so much is improper training, um, really bad timing in training. So if you are luring, if you are showing the reward, if you're enticing your dog with the reward prior to the behavior, that's bad timing. The dog should only be aware of the reward at the time of the behavior, not before. Training is actually a skill, not just for the dog, but also for the human performing the training. So if you think of it that way, if you think of, if you think about improving the timing of the reward, that is what is actually going to instill the behavior in your dog that will last even when a treat is not present. So it's really all about appropriate training and appropriate timing. All right, the second myth I hear all the time over social media, especially about dog behavior and training specifically, is my dog peed on the carpet and they peed on the carpet out of spite because they're mad at me. Again, let's debunk this one. Also the idea that my dog knows they did something wrong, right? So let's tackle these both together. So. In this myth, we're not only saying that your dog knows they did something wrong, but there's also that feeling of guilt. Both of these are myths. But you're effectively saying, if, if you're saying that my dog intentionally did this because they're mad at me or because they're frustrated or angry or whatever uh, may be the case, like, oh, I've been gone all day so my dog is mad at me so they peed on the carpet. This would require a lot of forethought and planning on your dog's part. Can we do the video? Can we do the video? Okay, thank you. The amount of high level reasoning that it would take to not only say, if I perform this action, my human is then going to behave or feel a certain way. That kind of high level thinking and reasoning we, we at this time know uh, based on cognitive studies that have been done on canines, our, our dogs are not, while dogs are incredibly smart and have many, many wonderful things that they can do that we can't even imagine doing, that kind of high level reasoning is not something that has ever been experienced in any sort of cognitive research performed on canines. So we know that part is false. So now let's get to this like guilt part, right? That my dog knows they did something bad, that they feel guilty. What's actually happening here is that 
Dogs are amazing at reading body language. So they know when we're upset. They know when we're angry. So what happens here is that your dog wants you to be happy. Dogs have evolved alongside humans and they know that certain looks that they can they can change the looks they give you and their body language to help us feel better and make us happier make us not angry make us not sad dogs are really good at this which is why they are such good companions for us as humans they have evolved alongside of us to get better and better and better at this particular set of skills that they have to enrich our lives um, because it's a give and take relationship on both ends with humans and dogs so they are actually giving you these looks to make you less angry to make you less sad and it's it doesn't necessarily have a whole lot to do with anything they've done and like we like I was just saying at the first part of this they don't really have that high level reasoning ability to say if I do this it will elicit X response from my human all they're trying to do is make you happier is make you less sad and that's not necessarily connected to anything they have done um, they, they are not necessarily pairing those two things so um, not only is your dog not intentionally trying to make you angry or get back at you for anything they also don't know that they've done anything wrong they don't they don't have any reason they, they don't feel guilt um, this is some something that humans do is called anthropomorphizing um, because we are attributing human emotions onto non-human beings or um, we even do it with inanimate objects but dogs don't feel guilt um, that's that's not something they do that's something that humans do and we as humans um, attribute our same emotions onto dogs but that is in fact not the case all right myth number three is that positive reward based training takes too long no not only am i going to tell you why this is a myth and we're going to be debunking it but i'm actually going to give you an example um this was not me going out asking for this but somebody actually posted on one of my youtube videos and i'm going to pull it up here they had worked with trainers they were using shock collars on their dogs and they were not getting anywhere i mean for years they were trying to train their dogs in old ways alpha training ways um, fear and pain based ways with their dogs not getting anywhere finally came around to start using positive reinforcement training and are seeing amazing results that they never saw with the old ways of training. Um, so not only does it not take too long, it works so much better and so much quicker than anything else that trainers have ever used in past decades. What I do know is that there are a lot of promises out there from alpha trainers and balanced trainers which to me is just like a fancy word for oh I use positive and negative and it all balances out <laughs> no I mean if you're balancing out positive and negative you're winding back up at zero right I don't know but like that's just how things work in my brain I try to like reason through things and that doesn't make any sense to me but anyway I digress what happens with pain and fear-based training is these trainers are trying to suppress emotions, suppress behaviors in our dogs. And we know that suppressing emotions and suppressing behaviors, it's like a pressure cooker, right? Like all of these things are being suppressed and pushed down and, and over time it just gets more and more and more and more and all of a sudden the, the lid explodes. One day just like we think it comes out of nowhere and the lid explodes and you just like they can't hold it in anymore you can't suppress all of this the way um people people think they've been doing that's how people get bit that's how kids get bit that's how dogs just you know suddenly like ah go crazy and people are like oh this came out of nowhere anyway suppression doesn't work and we know suppression doesn't work but it's really important to know this dogs 
are not computers. They are not machines. They are not robots. We can't push a button and change whatever we want to change about them. They are individuals. They are sentient beings. What we do with positive reinforcement training instead is we create a long-term solution. Because dogs are very complex social animals, but what we do effectively with positive reinforcement training, first of all, I see huge advances in very short periods of time with my own personal clients, and these behavior changes last long after we run out of treats. All right, myth number four. We're on to four. Four? Eh, yeah, four. We're on to number four. <laughs> and I think I've talked about this one before in another video, but the myth is that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Very contrary to that very old saying, dogs are able to learn well into adulthood. For healthy adult dogs, learning new skills is more than possible. It happens every day. In fact, many service dogs don't actually begin their service training until they are completely out of puppyhood. They are full grown adults before they even start service training. It is very possible and it happens every single day. All right, and the number one, no, we're on to number five, but it's probably the number one myth <laughs> that I hear. This is number five in the video, is that positive training won't work for my dog's breed. They're way too pushy. They're way too stubborn. They're really headstrong. Um, my dog, it's not gonna work with my dog. Here's the fact of the matter. The laws of learning apply universally. Positive rewards training is especially effective for dogs that maybe had some fear or pain-based training in the past because when we apply positive rewards training to these dogs, they are so thankful. Positive training Reward-based training allows you and your dog a common language. It allows you and your dog to build a bond. It allows you and your dog to build on a foundation of trust and communication. All right, guys, I really do hope you enjoyed this video. I really, I, I do like bringing you these kinds of videos that maybe you've heard these things from other people or maybe you thought these things before watching this video. I'm here to help spread the word. I'm here to help educate. I'm here to help show you a better way for you and your dog to live happily together, harmoniously in the same house. I want dogs to find their loving forever home and stay there. Um, I don't want dogs winding up in the shelter system. I want dogs to be well taken care of in their forever homes. That's my goal. And positive reinforcement training is what I know works best. And getting this information out to you is, is just one way of me being able to help as many dogs as I possibly can. And, and that's my whole goal. So I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please post them in the comment section below. As always, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel um, grow. It, it's a compliment, <laughs> and which I really very much appreciate from you. And if you look right down there at that subscribe button and it is red, go ahead and click it and turn it gray. When it turns gray, a bell will appear. So go ahead and click the bell, select all notifications. That way you don't have to come searching for my videos. YouTube will notify you every time a new one goes live and you can just click and watch. And it's gonna be so much easier and streamlined for you. Uh, again, check all of the links in the description. There's a link to the group, which I do hope you join. There are thousands of other pet parents there waiting for you to come and join. If you haven't already, a link to my ebook, a link to my online video training, the beginner dog training series, my Amazon storefront, which I have so many wonderful, my favorite dog products listed, um, which I do hope you check out because I have hand selected and curated this list of my favorite products. These are products that the only products I use in these particular categories. Um, for my pets, I, I'm very, very picky about what I use for my pets. So I do hope you check out my Amazon storefront because 
I, I curated this list just for you to go check out and see what are some of the best products that you can use for your pet. Um, yeah, so I do hope you enjoy the video. Thank you so much for being here with me on YouTube. I can't wait to see you in our next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.